Good evening, ladies as well as gentlemen. Papa Boris here with some more Guild of Dungeoneering. That's right, we got a blast from Summer's Past. This game, which I wrapped up a few months ago, has undergone a pretty big update. So I wanted to show off what the update was. I don't know if I'm going to do a full series on it. Let me know if you want to see that or not. Uh, but I wanted to do a quick video just to show you um, what the update was and uh, what are some of the changes to the game. So we're here in the tutorial mission. We just killed our first rubber ducky. Let's go ahead and uh, drop a room down. So, so far everything looks pretty much the same. Um, and we'll continue in. Once we get into combat, we'll see some of the differences in this game. One of the previous problems was that the animations for combat weren't just bad. They literally did not exist. Now things are a lot more cool looking in combat. Even though the differences aren't major and they're pretty simple, it really adds a lot to the whole experience. So the way that combat used to work is that monsters and you went at the same time. Now it's changed that the monster attacks you first and you attack it second. Mechanically this doesn't affect uh, the game at all. It's basically the same thing because it always used to be that if you and the monster kill each other at the same time, you would lose. And the same thing happens now. So here, I'll, we can see not just the card the monster's playing, but also some symbols for what's happening. So one unblockable damage. Now I'll do my card, and you see, you see this? Isn't that kind of cool? I mean, it's not like anything gigantic, but it actually, like, you know, the screen shakes a little bit. Like, it's the simple things that really actually, like, you know, do make a pretty big difference. So here's me blocking an attack. Uh, I like this a lot. I think that uh, this definitely... Um, makes me want to come back and uh, play, play this game some more. There is like a dev blog where they talked about a lot of other things they want to do, like a daily challenge system or an endless mode, and they're coming out with an expansion with pirates or something. So honestly, uh, this game seems like it's uh, going to be receiving some support from the developers, and um, it's one that I'll be coming back to. So let's grab a massive gem here. Drop a bat down and do some more fighting. Uh, there there, ha there are some other differences, which we'll see once we complete this level. Here we have to defeat two more monsters. Got kind of a crappy opening hand with two cowers, um, so it's hard for me to get some damage going, so I'll use them when I have an opportunity to do so. As I did there, note that this bite is unblockable, so cowering would not have stopped it. This first mission is very easy because um, there I don't think you can get any level two monsters, so as long as you can like play one damage for each damage the monster deals it's just pretty much impossible to lose this tutorial level as it should be honestly in a tutorial the guy jumps up and down and i guess that was it actually yes that was my third monster so there's this now victory screen which uh shows up at the end to give a little bit more satisfaction for finishing things up so you see like you know the map explored i don't know if this is like money you found while exploring the map i think it's probably loot right and I guess you get gold for killing monsters and the quest bonus. Basically, I would not suggest grinding this game, exploring the map, and killing more monsters uh, just to get more gold. The quest bonuses pretty much outweigh everything. And uh, that gives you enough to buy pretty much everything that you need by the time the game is over. So the game is, uh, the, the mission is ended. We go back to the guild. I'm going to um, expand and we're going to get the bruiser class, which is really the best tier one class, in my opinion. Um, I actually, while preparing for this video, tried the apprentice. Went into the next level, fought a rat, and died. And I was like, yep, that's enough of playing things that aren't the bruiser. So one really nice addition is it now says click for details. You can click on the class and see what the starting deck is, as well as what traits the class has, which is nice. So you can actually like see what you're getting into. Um, it used to be you'd have to like go to the wiki, and the wiki wasn't even up to date when I was looking at it, so I like I think I put in some of the classes in there, but for any of the classes now you can just click and be like, okay, here are the cards that this class starts with. Now one of the major changes you might notice, hey, does this troubadour have less health than he used to? And the answer is yes. So in an effort to make the uh, game a little bit more balanced, the designers have knocked two health off of the uh, tier three classes, and they've knocked one health off of the tier 2 classes, so whereas the Barbarian used to have 6 health, now he only has 5. So it brings everything in balance. But once you advance to the second stage of the game, all of the um, tier 1, all the, all the classes, not just the tier 1 and tier 2s, but all the classes get plus 1 health. And then once you advance to, the, advance to the third and final stage of the game, all the classes get an extra plus 1 health. So basically, by the end of the day, the tier 2 classes are going to be plus 1 health compared to what they were before. Tier 3 classes will be exactly the same, and the Tier 1 classes will have plus 2 health. 
Now the designers have said that they did this to try to like make the uh, earlier classes more viable. It doesn't at all because of the terrible decks that the tier one classes have. And the designer did acknowledge this, that this, they're still weaker overall because of their poor decks. What I like about this change is that it makes it so that racing up to the tier two class um, and getting it before you advance to the second stage isn't really a very good strategy anymore. And similarly, once you're in the tier two place, racing up to the uh, tier three class, while that actually is probably still better than using the tier two classes, because at least they're close on health, uh, isn't like, you know, the end all be all strategy. So it encourages you to spend your money unlocking more of the loot rather than saving up to race up to the next class. Like Barbarian, honestly, at six health, dude definitely died sometimes. So five health, I really don't want to play him until, you know, uh, it's gotten the plus one health bonus. But anyway, um, let's just go ahead and grab the bruiser here. And go into our next level where we fight the Rat King. So this level is also pretty easy. The Rat King is not that tough. It's just, uh, you know, still getting you kind of warmed up to the game. Unfortunately, there's no way up here. I guess I could use the mysterious fountain. Sure, let's live a little. Loner means dead end if it's in a minus HP. So yeah, um, I actually am not going to place another tile yet because I want this bat to have minus one health. Just to make the first fight a little bit easier. Wait. Oh, it's not, that's not a dead end because it's got a way out. Whoops, I'm stupid. Um, yes, that was totally pointless. I should have just placed the other building tile. Anyway, bats only have four health to start with. This actually kind of sucks because I can't block this bite, so I'm wasting my shield here. Um, here's where we'll deal a damage to it with our spikiness by blocking that attack. Drain. Oh, damn it. Well, so we stay where we are. I could actually lose this, potentially, although I don't think bats ever deal two damage in one hit. Um, oh my god. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lose unless I can get my magic block or something. Because these bites are actually unblockable. Yeah, so the bat's gonna kill me. Oh my god, that was embarrassing. However, um, could I have? Oh god, I was like, oh, I didn't play the assassin because, uh, you know, or the apprentice because, you know, it died against a rat. So, like, I never die when I buy with, with the bruiser, of course, when I play the game. Um, uh, could I have survived that? I mean,. I think if I, what was the first thing I blocked with my magic block? I think what I blocked was I don't think it was a drain card. Yeah, I think I just totally screwed up. Should I do this mysterious? Fountain? Yeah, whatever. Let's just let's just let's just uh, roll here with the ponies. We got a good one. Found knowledge. I think it gives you like a plus one card in battle or something. Okay. God damn these bites that can't be blocked. They do. These guys do have blockable attacks. Yeah, there's the neurotoxins. So this is nice. I get to keep a card and deal a couple of damage. And we have a claw. I could have blocked that. Use the blocking cards while I can, but I've got enough that I can just take it one for one and kill the rat. If I'd had one of the altars that either dealt plus one bonus damage or um or a plus one health, I would have actually survived, killed that first bat. So I guess those things do make a pretty big difference. All right, um, do I need to play this rat? I don't want to play the fountain up here because if it's bad, I'll go into the rat king with a disadvantage. I'm not so crazy as to do that. So we'll just play none of this stuff. I can level up on this rat man after walking through the fountain, which turned out to be a good fountain. Get out of here, bonk. Boom. Oh, that was that was really embarrassing. I just totally died with the bruiser. But uh, I I don't know. May, maybe I couldn't have. I forget. Was the first card I blocked also a drain card? I don't think it was. I think it was just like a spook or something, and it didn't actually heal it. So had I saved the shield for the drain, I would have won. So ha knowing what the cards were would have made a difference. When I died as the apprentice, it was just like there was nothing I could do. When I died as the apprentice, it was just like the rat, like, and I had an equal number of health points, and the rat just dealt the damage to me every time, and the apprentice does not have any uh, blocking cards for physical damage, so there was just nothing I could do. Okay, so we get found a knowledge. 
they still have it so that if you pick up treasure after killing the final boss, you don't pick up the treasure, which annoys me to no end. But whatever. So there's Ratman. We have a... Wow, that's a big... Increased by two. Oof, that's a huge one. So let's block this headbutt. Deal a couple of damage to him. Um, I'll save these good uh, blocking cards for other things it has that I could maybe block, like anger, for instance. And there we go. Wow, that thing took a lot of damage that turn. All right, um, glyph club. It really doesn't make any difference what I take here. Let's take a blocking card. I think it's useful to have one of. Oh, I'm not going to get to pick up a massive gem. Will, 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 will you be distracted? Oh my god, he actually is distracted by the massive gem. I, if I stick it over here. Whoops, so I just gave myself an extra fight. Um, that was silly. Anyway. Let's kill another rat man. Now that I'm level 3, it should be even easier. But yeah, anyway. So that's, uh, let's go to engineering here for you. It's got a sleek new look. The animations, I think, do make a really big difference. They just they make the game all around a lot more appealing to look at. Being able to preview the classes is nice. The victory screen at the end is super cool. Um, I don't think I want to take two stupidity cards just to get two health because I've already got enough health as it is. And we'll just go and uh, fight the Rat King. Leader. But there's no minions surrounding him. Alright, so we'll save our bashes for his crappier cards that I can actually block in their entirety for extra spiky damage. Ooh, this sucks. I am just going to take a hit and deal nothing in return, unfortunately. I didn't get my unblockable damage card that time, but here we go. Let's get out of here. For three total damage, one, two, three. And we'll just kill him with a mind strike. There's no reason to block because I just have the kill here. And that that that's a cool little animation there where it like pings and flies to your deck and pulls out a card. So yeah, um what the hey? Let's do one more level, huh? It's only been a twelve minute video so far. So, um when expanding, I'm gonna go for the plus one damage thing, which I don't think I've actually played with before. So let's go ahead and do that. For now, it's only for the first two fights. And let's go ahead and get some loot. Yeah, it seems fine. We'll eventually have all of them anyway. It's all good in the hood here. So let's do a harder quest. Blah, blah. And where do we want to go? Chests full of treasure. Let's try out the hardest one. Scope out the defenses or take out the guards. I think all the level 1 quests are pretty pointless. Defeat four monsters, yes. You don't even need to necessarily fight the guards. You can just, you know, wander around killing random monsters. Let's do a scary spider here. Pretty tough enemy for level 1. It's got 6 health. It is frail, but pretty much impossible as a level 1, tier 1 character to ever deal 4 damage at once. It's very, very difficult. This kind of sucks. So I actually, um... Wait, what just happened? Why did he deal three damage? Get yeah, plus one to first physical damage. So hang on a second. Oh, oh, this is a different thing. Oh my god, I was I got it confused with brittle. Ah, oh, of course, yes. So that's how I actually deal damage to him. <clears throat> oh god, I thought this was brittle. Brittle is where if you deal four damage to it, it takes um, an extra two. Frail is actually way worse. That's each physical attack deals plus one damage. So yes, the scary spiders aren't actually that scary because they really they have six health, but realistically they're just gonna get totally smashed. I'm gonna just grab more block. That's pretty good against these early monsters. In a later level, I would have taken the magic damage just to have a little bit more versatility in my damage types. Okay, well let's you know keep it interesting. Let's fight a level two monster so that. Uh, Keep, 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 so that we can level up before fighting that thing over there. Ah, oh, I don't get either of my blocking cards. That's fine, I'll just use that, I guess. It's a little overkill, but 
I don't think these goblins have anything super great. Ah, there's a get out of here. Bonk, bonk, bonk. The warrior's spirit is pretty much the same as plus one health as long as you have physical damage. I think the plus one health is generally better because obviously that can be used by anyone, not just the people who have physical damage. Let's take some magic damage there. Get some more hitting power. But uh, it's nice to have the... Ooh, you have level 3 monsters, actually, in this one. Interesting. I'm not going to fight him as a level 2, though. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's nice to get the Warrior Spirit one, because then if you are trying to race up to a Tier 2 upgrade in the Fighting Tree, then the Shrine that you bought contributes to that. Skeleton is brittle. I'm probably not going to deal 4 damage to him all in one go. Alright, let's stop the drain. Even though the shield is a little bit overkill. Ooh, bash, just in time. So now this guy's just totally screwed. I can blast past his healing with the fire blast. Yeah. Okay, that was the last monster, yeah? Wasn't it? No, that wasn't. That was not the last monster. Stupidity and health. Or magic damage. Let's go for fire two. Get some flame lash going here. It's a pretty good one. Oh, I'm actually going to fight the level one. Can I get myself to fight a level three? N that was weird. So it actually makes him go fight uh, level two, which I guess I'm happy about because it's more of a challenge than level one. I'm more likely to get an item that I can sell for money. So fury means that he deals. Uh, an extra physical damage if he's at half health, so you try to, you'd want to try to get him down to um, be past half. Fire Blast, I think, is a mistake here, because I'll take him to exactly half. So what I want to do instead is Oi. So it's like this, so he does not Furying me right here, and then I Fire Blast past the Fury. Now, this is kind of a problem. I lost my damage card, so uh, I could get some pretty bad um, flips here. I'm actually going to run out of cards. I can actually die here, holy crap. That was really lucky, because this is lethal damage. I'm lucky that I got physical block. What the? Wow. Maybe I should have played the card draw effect so that I don't, so I did, so, so as not to get neurotoxin. I was clearly way too cocky there. But then again, if I'd played the card draw, I would have taken him down to half health exactly. He just got a pretty good draw of cards, honestly. Anyway, we win. So yay. Um, 42 gold. Good times had by all. And okay, we'll end it right here. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, it, the Guild of Engineering, pretty cool game. I'm very happy with my purchase. If you want to get it, it's on Steam. If not, that's totally okay. Have a good one, everybody. I'll see you next time.